I love what Boston's doing. Boston is saying, we're going to get one in these next few years. Give me Drew. Give me Derek. Give me Tatum Brown. Give me Porzingis. We're going to get one in these next few years. Might not be this year. Might not be next year. But like Jalen Brown could not score out of the post until this year. Now he's one of the best post-up wings in the league. Jason Tatum every year has struggled with pull-up three-point shooting. He's shooting better with this pull-up three-point shot this year. Guys are getting better. They're, they're going into their prime of their careers. And Boston yeah. has basically said, we're betting on continuity. We're betting on these older vets. They're going to get at least one. Let's lock everybody in. The Boston Celtics couldn't be more locked into the NBA playoffs than they are right now. It seems like over the past month, they have been locked into that number one seed and had nothing to play for, just waiting for the time to come. Now, last offseason, Brad Stevens made the right moves in terms of adding Drew Holiday, adding Chris Stapps Porzingis alongside Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Derek White, along with re-signing Peyton Pritchard to an extension, having Sam Hauser back and Al Horford, and then during the deadline, bringing in Xavier Tillman. Everyone thought the loss of Marcus Smart and Grant Williams and some of the other guys on the team was going to be massive hits. However, Brad Stevens made sure that Drew Holiday and Chris Stapps Porzingis were going to be the best fits possible, and they have been. Winning 64 games this season to just 18, the Celtics are ready to start their new dynasty. In this video, we're going to break down exactly what it is going to take for the Celtics to not only start the dynasty, but win Banner 18 this season. Before we jump into the video though, make sure you guys do me a big favor. Hit that like button if you guys want to see more Celtics videos throughout the entirety of the playoffs. But also, if you guys want to see the live reaction or my live reaction to the 76ers Heat play in tournament game, I will be live on Twitch watching that game, and I will be live streaming every single playoff game live on my YouTube channel, which is this one, and my Twitch as well. So follow the Twitch, subscribe to the YouTube, join the family. It's free, costs nothing, and let's get into why the Celtics dynasty starts today. Now, when it comes to winning a championship, when it comes to some of the best teams in the NBA... They need to have a good combination of offense and defense. And quite frankly, the Celtics are the definition of very good in both categories. Number two in the NBA in points per game this season. But also, top five in defense, a points a lot per game this season as well. And the margin of victory for the Celtics this season is around 11 points per game. 11.3 to be exact, which is number one in the NBA. Not only that, but we also rank number two in the NBA in three-point per uh, percentage. Also number two in two-point percentage. And number one in effective field goal percentage but also have one of the best defenses in the NBA in those categories as well. Number two in effective field goal percentage allowed. Number uh, four in three-point percentage allowed. Number two in two-point... Guys, one of the best defenses combined with a nasty offense gives the Celtics the best shot at winning a championship this season. But not only that, Brad Stevens ensured the Celtics that they would have time to win championships. Drew Holiday, bring him in bringing in Chris Stapps Porzingis, but then re-signing Drew, giving us more cap space for next season to potentially re-sign Derek White. And now the Celtics are locked in with Drew, Derek, Jalen, Jason, Chris Stapps, Peyton Pritchard, Sam Hauser, and Al Horvath for the uh, foreseeable future, along with some great depth players in Xavier Tillman, O'Shea Brissett, and also Jaden Springer and Sfi Mikhailuk have been amazing as well. Now, when you actually sit back and look at what the Celtics have done this season from a stat perspective, they've been insane. Five players averaging more than 10 points a game, two players averaging nine or more, and then Al Horford at 8.6. This eight-man rotation is probably one of the best in the NBA in terms of skill, talent, and team chemistry-wise. Jason Tatum had an unbelievable year, did struggle at times, but overall, 27 points a game with eight rebounds and five assists is amazing. Jalen Brown not only was amazing, but take the major step up in the post. One of was one of the most efficient post scorers in the NBA this season, as well as being a really good defender as well, averaging the team high 1.2 steals per game, which is kind of crazy to think about because you have a guy like Derek White, you have a guy like Drew on this team as well. But not only that, Drew and Derek were amazing defensively. Chris Stapps is averaging about two blocks a game. Unreal. And the Celtics have, you know, again, Peyton Pritchard has been absolutely balling out over the last few weeks, putting up almost a 40-point game last night. Guys, 
if this team can get it going in the playoffs, they're going to be so tough to stop. Also, guys, we are, how many shooters do we have here shooting over 37%? right we have jason tatum at 37.6 you have chris Stapps at 37.5 Derek Wood at 39 drew holiday almost at 43 percent from three sam hauser at 42.4 al at 41.9 and then Derek Wood at 39.6 jalen brown struggled from three this season but i guarantee you once he gets his shot going dude this team is probably one of the scariest in the nba now, guys, sadly, everything can't be sunshine and rainbows, right? From the outside looking in, the Celtics have all the potential in the world to win the NBA Finals this season. But there are some really concerning things heading into this year's NBA playoffs. First of all, guys, we cannot rebound the ball. We rank number 26 in the NBA in offensive rebounds allowed per game. And if this number does not somehow fix in the NBA playoffs, we are going to struggle in a lot of games, right? Obviously, when we take a look at it, we understand what this actually means. It means the opposing team is getting 11.1 more shots per game than they really should be. And when it all comes down to the very end, those 11 more shot attempts will matter. When teams are out shooting us by 11, 10, 8, even 5 more shots than us, that gives them a better shot to win the game. We need to fix offensive rebound. We cannot allow teams to rebound the ball. And if we do that, we will win almost every, I guarantee it. Our offense is so tough to stop and our defense is so good. If we can just rebound the ball, we're going to win a lot of these games. Now, let's be brutally honest for a second. The Celtics are probably the scariest team in the NBA, and you talk about how important Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum really are to this basketball team, but one of the biggest X factors, and we've known this for a while now, is this man right here. The health of Chris as Porzingis means everything for the Boston Celtics, and now that we're in the playoffs, there's no more rest days. This man needs to stay healthy, and we will demoralize the NBA, and here's why. The Celtics are allowed to play a lot of spread isolation. Now, what that means is basically what we just saw here with Jalen Brown, right? We're going to cover the corners, cover the wings with Sam, Payne, Pritchard, Chris Stapps, and Derek White. Now, the reason we can do this is because all of these guys around the perimeter can shoot the ball. Jalen Brown is very good when it comes to getting to the basket, drawing multiple defenders, and scoring at the rim, right? Or even getting into the post and playing that one-on-one -on -one iso ball. He's very good when it comes to that. But at the same time, he can draw in multiple different defenders. At this point in time, we see two guys in the paint and Josh Giddy trailing him, which is leaving two guys wide open. Derek White and Chris Stapps Porzingis. Jalen makes an unbelievable pass here and finds Porzingis for a wide open three. Doesn't even have to move and it's going to be good, right? Porzingis makes us a more versatile, more dynamic team, and he is crucial to this Boston Celtics run, not only this year, but for the dynasty if it does get started. Not only is Porzingis a vital asset on offense, but defensively, he has been so much more than I thought he would be. Losing Robert Williams, I was pretty sad. I thought we lost one of the best shot blockers in the NBA. But Porzingis has been that. He's been so good, especially here on Demonis Sabonis. You know, stays on his feet until that shot is going up, sends it in the other direction, gets the rebound, and boom. Just like that, we have a great shot blocker here in Boston who will continue to do that in this year's NBA playoffs. Now, this side, or this play specifically, we're going to see some weak side rotation by Porzingis. Watch how he makes a play here on this one, right? Scoot over to, um, I believe, Jabari Walker. Walker going to drive into the paint, draw multiple defenders over, and here comes a block shot, right? Offensive rebound. What do we say it for? Need to rebound the basketball. Box out. But then Porzingis gets another block shot, right? Boom, balls on the floor again. Look at another offensive rebound. Guys, this is real. This is real. The offensive rebounds that we allow needs to be changed, right? Again, another opportunity here for him. Jabari Walker in the paint. Spin, floater, blocked again. Guys, we need to get rebounds. And look at this again. Almost gets another one. But Porzingis is going to help as much as he can down low. And the last thing of importance that the Celtics need to carry on into the playoffs is is the unselfish style of basketball. You know, everyone in the world, including me, hates when we just run ISO. And that was a problem for the Celtics for a while where we would just run Tatum or Jalen, just ISO ball, ISO ball, ISO ball. Ball movement is the most important thing. Watch this play here as Drew Holiday has taken over the reins as the point guard for the Celtics and has fit in like a puzzle piece. Drives baseline, and again, once you can drive baseline, you're going to draw a lot of weak side defense, right? You have Xavier Tillman in this dunker spot, maybe could get an easy dunk here. 
Drew gets it over there, and now you have even more rotation. Now you have basically four guys in the paint here for the Kings. Xavier Tillman, hey, shout out to Xavier Tillman. Not only is he starting to shoot threes, he's going to be here for a while, and I guarantee you he's going to be huge. But not only that, a great passer as well. Kicks it over to Porzingis, right? But then Porzingis makes the extra pass over to Tatum, and Tatum has a wide open three here again. This is going to be crucial for the Celtics to win the championship this year. The ball movement and executing offensively, but at the same time, making sure you get the rebounds. The Celtics are going to be big. Obviously, Jason Tatum misses that shot there, gets the rebound, and again, Tillman, knowing where to move the basketball, is going to kick it back over to Xavier or, um, Chris Asporzingis across the court, and then he gets another opportunity for the three ball, but gets it to go. But at the very end of the day, even though Tatum missed this shot, it's an open look. If the Celtics can hit their threes, I guarantee you it's going to be very tough for teams to beat it. So the most important thing is going to the playoffs, guys. Rebound the basketball is probably the biggest thing we need to know. We need to understand, right? Rebound the ball. Two, execute offensively. Move the ball around. Do not settle for iso isolation shots, right? Three, get the ball to Porzingis. He can cook in the paint. He can cook in the post. He can hit threes. He can, you know, be a very good uh, passer as well from the post. And he can create situations in pick and roll. He can do, you know, go screens. Those end up being really good for him as well. I think Porzingis is the key to the Celtics starting the new dynasty. And it starts this season. Now, in the comments down below, comment down below, who do you want the Celtics to play in the first round? Right now, it looks like it could be Miami or it could be Philadelphia. Outside of those two teams, if one of them lose both games, then it could be a team like Atlanta, who we struggled with last season, and they just had DeJounte Murray drop 44 points on us. Or the Chicago Bulls. Obviously, you'd probably want to play the latter, but Miami, Philadelphia, hey, would you rather go through the one of the best right away in Miami, who were in the finals last year? Would you rather take on a team like Philadelphia with uh, Joel Embiid? Could he be a little bit scrappy in both series? Who do you guys want to play? Hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys tomorrow night. Actually, I think Wednesday night. Heat. 76ers, come react to that game with me live on Twitch, and I'll see you guys there. Peace.